Wow, this is Lisa by Envy, a beautiful combination of 70% synthetic hair and 30% human hair. I am just thrilled with this wig and Envy, you knocked this one right out of the park. Before I go any further, I want to say a great big thank you to Denise Sheets, my wig sister, and she has a channel over at Hey Wig Sister, which is a wonderful resource for all kinds of styles, all kinds of colors. Love Denise's channel. We've become fast friends. And Denise also reviewed this same wig that I'm wearing, Lisa, in the color Toasted Sesame. So if white isn't your thing, head over to Hey Wig Sister so you can see this and other wigs, along with a lot of other things about wigs over at Hey Wig Sister. Thanks again, Denise, for sending this to me. I hope I do you proud. When I edit this video, I'm going to insert a few seconds of a video that I took back in October when I had six inches cut off my hair because you're going to see that this wig that I have on my head is so close to how I wear my hair and how it looked back in October. It's grown a few inches since then. But when I saw this, I thought, oh, wow, that is almost a dead ringer for the style that I love to wear. So here it is. I find older women with gray hair and real faces, they don't have to be completely as they were, um, to be incredibly compelling figures. And, uh, and, and because also it, it, it exudes confidence and self-confidence. Mm. And that's very attractive. Let's talk about Lisa's style. Lisa is what you call a lob, which is a long bob, love a bob, and she has long layers. You'll see that when I do the spin. And she kind of reminds me of Zoe. I uh, did a review of Zoe back in, I think it was around April of 21. Let me share my screen with you. And here I am holding up Zoe next to my virgin hair. So again, you're seeing the color white virgin hair next to Zoe and I think that that's a pretty good match so I've I have a few um, I have a few wigs by Envy in this color light gray and I also have uh, a couple in the color medium gray I'll show you that a little bit later on but what a beautiful match they've done. It's very hard to film white wigs. That's why you're seeing so much white bounce off of those, those fibers there. But you can see as I move back from the camera, from the light, you can see how it very much matches my own hair. I have to tell you that Envy's fibers feel so realistic just like real hair and with that 30 percent real hair there i'm sure that that's one of the reasons the the density on the wig is very light very very silky very light on your head she comes to you with a center part now we're going to talk about that part a little bit more because and when I show you the cap, you'll see that she has a very large mono part underneath. So you're going to be able to part the hair either in the middle as she comes to you or to the left or to the right. So if you follow me, you know that I rarely wear my hair split down the middle. Um, so just to give it a little more softness around my face, I pushed it back a little bit. Let's I mean, look at the look at the beautiful layering around the face. Look at look at how it's feather cut on the edges, so that it just frames your face beautifully. And then let's do a spin so that you can see the back. I mean, just beautifully, beautifully layered. In a moment, I'll take her off so that you can see the inside of the cap. But before I do that, I want to do a little bit different parting. So I'm going to go in and part her on the left side, just left of center, which is where I usually 
where my part... Sometimes I do a very deep left part, and I certainly could do that with Lisa, um, because she has a... Um, she's got that full monofilament top. But now see what happens when I try to part her. She will fall, so I, I will have to give her a little bit of training so that it doesn't fall in my face, but that can easily be done. Sometimes you can do it just with the with the heat from your hands. Um, but you just want to, if you don't, if that doesn't work, um, sometimes I'll just put a clip on it and then I'll put it back on the wig stand and I'll leave it overnight or even just for a few hours. But but I'm heating up my hands so that they, that might possibly do it just so that you kind of reposition those knots uh, to get the hair where you want it. You could also, of course, use, uh, she's heat friendly. So you could use a hair dryer with a brush and you could do it that way as well. Or any hot tool that you have, a comb, uh, a brush. As always, though, just make sure you watch your heat. You don't want that heat to get too high. So here she is um, parted on the left and, of course, coming up over the top of my head. Now, I, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't stay like that, but just to give you an idea of how that would look, and we're going to get a very close look on that lace front. Beautifully done. Oh, beautifully done lace front. So if I wanted to, I could part her on the left or I could part her on the right. Let's see how she looks parted on the right. And then I'll do another another um, thing with the barrette just to kind of pull her back. We'll see how we like that. That's pretty too, isn't it? I'm telling you, if this wig is a higher end wig, if it were me and if I had to start all over again, I would reach for I would reach for a higher end premium wig, not necessarily all all uh, human hair, but just a really great wig with a great cap, great fibers. One of the very first wigs that I purchased was Zoe. I didn't know what I was doing, but I listened to the lady on the phone and she gave me some great advice and so I purchased Zoe. This wig reminds me very much of Zoe. Certainly she has the same fi fiber blend. So look at that. I mean, come on. Now, will she stay like that all day? No, not unless I take a hot comb to her or some kind of heat tool and, and just set and just set her like that. We'll do a little bit of styling a little bit later on. Oh, I want to talk with you about the fit. Now, I am an average just on the cusp of large. And I remember Denise saying in her review that... Um, she felt that it was fit a true average. And I am, as I just said, average to a little bit large. So I do not have any it stays on my head. I do not feel like she's riding up on my head. Um, I always have a problem with her riding up in the back because my hair is, doesn't have that beautiful rounded shape. Um, so I usually have to anchor my wig somehow, um, which is why I put the it stays up at the top. And then I usually put a couple of bobby pins uh, in the back. So, but I've had her on for probably a good, I don't know, hour because I've been outside trying to get the sunlight so you could see. And uh, she's not riding back. She probably would ride back if I had her on all day long. Um, but I already know that, so therefore... You know, I'll put the It Stays on and then just be done with it. If you're not familiar with It Stays, I have a video that where I talk about It Stays. I talk about it all the time, and I'll put a card up there for you so you can learn about It Stays. So I am confident that if I had a little bit of It Stays right there, or a wig grip, I could absolutely just run my hands through my hair like we like we do with with bio hair. So let me get her back to a center part. Not hard to do. The glasses are going to slide right in for you. Not a problem with glasses at all. So whether that's sunglasses or reading glasses or whatever glasses you have, not a problem. Now let's do a little bit of styling. I've seen a lot of wig reviewers who buy these headbands that um, 
just are so comfortable on your head. I've talked about square hair bands, but I wanted to get the one with the little knot. So we could put that on there and see how that looks. It's blue. It's a baby blue. It doesn't look baby blue in the monitor. It looks more like a, um, a little boy blue but um, it's really more of a pale blue, let's just say that. So it looks great like that, right? And try one with a different color. Here's one with a darker color. So as we always say, put a headband on a wig. Nobody's ever going to think wig, ever. Cute. Now this is one of those square hair bands that fold like sunglasses. I'll link them below and they come in all kinds of different colors and patterns. But now we're going to have a close up look at the hairline. And then I'll pull this back for you so that you can see right around the ear tab area. There is a piece of lace that runs right there. You want to make sure it has covered ear tabs. You want to make sure that you push those ear tabs in very, very well. But look at that. I mean, I could pull out some of my hair if I wanted to. It's just about the same length as these sides. But for now, I'll just leave them. You can see my own bio hair has a little bit of dark right there. <laughs> Now she does have open wefting in the back, you'll see that, um, but she does have this mono filament top, so I'm not going to be able to push anything right into the top. And then let's put one on the side. How beautiful. Look at that layering. Now I could see a little bit of the So I could see a little bit of that uh, lace. So what I'm going to do is just pull out the hair just a little bit more. And that will obscure that, that lace line. Envy's Jane in the color medium gray so you can see the difference between the two colors right here so there's the difference so you can see the gray the medium gray has lots more gray in her along with the white and then the, the uh, light gray really to me looks more like a white although they're calling it light gray but you could see when I held her up to my hand and when I showed you the insert from my natural bio hair she really does present as a cool white beautifully done beautifully done cool white let's talk about the cap construction now for Lisa she has that absolutely beautiful mono full mono top full so you're going to be able to part Lisa anywhere 
in that area. You saw that I parted her on the left. You saw that I parted her on the right. She also has this gorgeous silicone strip that runs right across the top of the wig. And when I was new, I never really knew what that was for. But that's a wonderful addition if you don't have any hair so that she will be able to lay flat right there um, and be very secure on your head. Of course, you could use some wig tape if you felt like you needed more security there. She also has um, underneath that silicone are the ear tabs. So there's no added bulk there. Uh, it's just put right underneath the silicone. And then she has the Velcro adjusters. I did not need to use those at all. She has the felt covered extended lace and of course she has open wefting in the back. That's going to keep her nice and cool. Beautifully done cap. Beautifully, beautifully done cap. Ah, So nice to have her back on my head. So just a word about the cap and of course the price point of the uh, Envy wigs with the 30% human hair and all the cap, all the beautiful features of the cap, naturally that's going to be a different price point than just a machine made wig or um, even a wig that doesn't have any human hair at all. But I will tell you that what I've learned is reach even if you have to save, reach for the best wig that you can afford. For me, that would be something like this. I never looked back on Zoe. Zoe was my first choice. Zoe would be my choice again today. Here's a big tip. If you find something that looks very close to what your hair looked like before you started to lose your hair, or maybe you have hair and you just want a wig, there are many people like that as well. So here's a tip. Whether you have hair, whether you don't have hair, some women just like to buy a wig. They have a full head of hair, but they want a different look. My advice is to go with something that is very close to your natural bio hair. Whether that's how, the, how your hair looked before it started thinning or before you started losing it or close to what you have now because then I, I think that most of us feel that you're not going to feel so self-conscious. You're always going to feel self-conscious in the beginning. That will, that will go away after you've had more experience wear, with wearing the wig. But if I put this wig on and walked anywhere where people know me, they would just think I got a haircut because my hair is about down to here now. But they would just think I went out and I got another hair haircut because it is so close to my own bio hair. Um, the big difference is there's some there's some volume. There's no thin areas. But close to what you have now, that's my advice. Get as close to what you have now and buy the best wig that you can. Even if you have to save for it a while, um, it's going to save you a lot more money in the long run. You won't be buying wigs that you're that you feel uncomfortable in, that that never get worn, that just sit in the box. So reach for the stars. So again, if you like this wig, you may want to take a look at Zoe. I've linked her up there and below for you. I want to thank Denise Sheets again for sending me this beautiful wig. And I want to thank you so much for stopping by today. Remember always to look for the silver linings. They're still there. Happy spring, everybody. It's just around the corner. Bye-bye.